Yeah, hello and welcome to the fourth part of the Beauty Retouch tutorial series for After Effects. I'm Matthias for marmoworld.com and in the previous parts we finished essentially the entire Beauty Retouch for the main clip that we address in this series, but today I want to show you some alternative workflows and for this I have prepared another example. So today we are going to address this clip here and the technique we are using is pretty similar to what we did in the other example except that this time we don't rely on Mocha for tracking but we actually want to go with the After Effects built-in tools with the Mask Tracker and I'll show you how to work with this one and I think this workflow is mostly useful if your movement is not too complicated. You can see here the face is moving but it's not really turning a lot or something like this so the masks won't change a lot in shape and in those scenarios the built-in uh, mask tracker of After Effects is good enough, although Mocha is a bit more accurate and robust. But for these easy tracking tasks, you might save some time if you don't need to go to another application. So let's see how this is working here. So here we are in After Effects and this is a clip uh, that we want to address and I want to track it with the mask tracker. So what I do is I want to do a rough mask around the head rough mask is really sufficient and let's call it outline and I right click on it and say track mask which reveals the tracker panel and what we want to track here now is a face track outline only because the outline of the face is what we need and I click track forwards and you can see that it detects the face and does a nice track and pretty fast you can see it's really a fast tracker and uh, it's not 100% accurate you can see uh, it has some problems but we are going to fix this in a second. So I set the mode here to none to better see the outline. Maybe I also give it a better contrasting color. So here we have our mask. And you can see it covers most of the skin, but obviously here is a part of the skin that we want to smooth too, and this is not included. Now the problem when you want to fix this is that you can see the mask has now a keyframe on each single frame, so it's really tough to change those. But in order to do it, we can use the free extension, the free script actually called Key Tweak, which is also developed by myself actually, and which you can find on a script. It's name your own price, so I'm happy if you donate a few bucks for it. But if you say, like, I'm, I'm not using it for commercial work uh, or I don't use it really a lot, I don't have some money at the moment, you can also set the price to $0 and uh, check it out for free. Okay, so how is it working? We switch to global masks or global mode in this case. I've got other tutorials explaining key tweak in more detail, so I just show you the general idea here. The idea is I duplicate my mask and give maybe the old one another color to make them a bit better to distinguish. So let's call this here outline and this here is my helper because this one I'm actually only going to use to tell After Effects what I want to change. So I don't want to change each keyframe so in the helper I first delete all keyframes and now let me just fix the first frame. Yeah. So I just go to the first frame and in my duplicate mask I just fix what I need to fix. Like this it's looking way more accurate. Yeah and I insert a keyframe again. So this means we have now one mask with just one keyframe. Now you can see the red one is not moving at all and we have the blue mask that has all these keyframes and is moving nicely. Now I can select both. Uh, I hit UU to reveal the modified uh, properties. Um, we select both mask passes and say please overwrite my original, which means the one with the many keyframes. And it's like, take the changes you did in this copy on this one keyframe and apply the same changes or like automatically the correct changes also to these other keyframes. You just, so make sure you set it to write, uh, overwrite original, select both mask paths and click key tweak. Now you can see the blue mask also jumped to this position. It still has all these keyframes and what is really super cool, it is still moving with our track. Yeah, so this was now really easy to, to fix this. Now there are some points like here where the mask tracker somehow made uh, the mask shrink and grow a bit. Uh, if you would like to fix this too, you could just start adding more keyframes like saying at this point the mask is still okay. So I 
select the keyframe from here, say edit copy, here say edit paste, and here it shrinks, here it grows again, so here it's still okay, so we copy this keyframe, command C and select this mask and command V to paste it, and I'll say here in between, at this point, for example, we want to fix the mask, so we copy the keyframe here again, copy, paste, and this one is what we're actually going to fix, so I select the individual vertices here and make them grow a bit, uh, like this. So it's, it's like we have now four keyframes that we changed in total. We just select the two again, the two mask passes, say please key tweak, apply my changes to the blue mask, you can see the blue mask uh, ad changed accordingly. Here it stick to where it was, here it added my change and here again it sticks to what we had originally because we inserted here some keyframes that we just copied over without changing them. This means in this entire region we now did a local change that made this mask not grow and shrink. Now I've got a separate tutorial explaining the use of key tweak in more detail, but this is how you use it to really conveniently uh, apply changes two masks with lots of keyframes, in particular from the mask tracker. Once we have finished adjusting, we can simply delete our helper and are back to our original outline track. Another great thing about the mask tracker is that you can track several masks simultaneously. So let's say we now want to have masks for all to, to exclude the details like the eyes, these nose parts and the mouth from our skin region. So I like to work with Roto Bezier and draw masks around those parts. For the mask I set the mask mode to none, such that I can see what I'm doing when drawing the next mask. So now we've got all those masks and we can just select all of them, yeah, all of them except the outline that we tracked so far, and say, and this time not with face tracking, but we just want to have position scale and rotation, we just say track forwards. And you can see that it's now tracking all those masks simultaneously and still at a pretty decent speed. Let's fast forward. Okay, and now uh, all those masks are moving. Again, you could modify those masks with key tweak. Yeah? An alternative to, to modifying them with key tweak would be to say, well, let's say you want to have a new mask, like you decided, hmm, maybe this mask should be a bit closer to the eye. I have a bit uh, too much space here around it. Yeah, what you could do is use Mask Tracker Plus, another script by myself. Actually Mask Tracker Plus and Mocha Import Plus are also included in a tracking bundle, so if you want to get both, this is a good option. So here we've got Mask Tracker Plus. Mask Tracker Plus can load the tracking data from a mask, so I can select this mask that we tracked, we just say load. Now it says loaded data from mask one and we can do different things with it. We can stabilize our clip based on it, we can move layers with our track to a corner pin, stabilize precoms, you've seen them in the previous tutorials with Mocha Import Plus, and move masks. So we can, for example, say, let's create another mask here, around the eye. And now instead of tracking this, we can just select the mask and say move mask, apply. And now it moved this mask w exactly with the track of the other mask. You can see it moves now with the same track. Yeah, without the need to retrack, so this definitely saves some time. So we like to use this mask instead, so I delete this one. Now we finished tracking, now we actually want to apply our tool skin retouch. Here we go. And I actually apply it on a duplicate of my layer, so I click Ctrl Command D to duplicate it. And I want to remove from this duplicate all the masks, because we don't want to have some masks on the layer when we apply isolate skin details on it. So let me just call this woman and we isolate the details. Now we've got the woman details and the woman soft. I actually called it woman 2 because there exists already a woman details uh, composition in my project here. Um, and now we can copy the masks to the soft layer. So we select the mask, say edit copy go to the soft layer, we actually duplicate command D, the soft layer, and on the upper part we paste it. Is, these are all approaches that you, or workflow parts that you've seen in the previous tutorial, so I go over them a bit faster. 
Yeah, now we have got the two variants of the soft layer and on the upper one we apply our fast blur effect. Now we can close skin retouch, we don't need it anymore. And let me move mask tracker plus out of the way. And now we add here some fast blur of, I don't know, until the skin looks nice, something like this. I can see skin before, bit ugly, skin now much smoother, but still we've got the details from our details layer here on top. Obviously we don't want to affect the entire image, so we need from all our masks to set the mode, um, from the outline we set the mode to add. Yeah? And now from all these masks, if we solo the layer, you can see now we have everything included. And now from all the other masks that we have, we want to set them to subtract to exclude these areas from the regions that we want to smooth. Now everything else here is just smoothed and the final result looks like this. Before, let me disable the masks here, before like this, smooth skin like this. So pretty good result. You can also see that like here at the hair, we didn't really pay attention to getting an accurate rotoscoping, but the plugin is really able to preserve the hair details here and don't smooth them too much when you smooth the skin. Okay, now the next question is now, so this is how you do the rotoscoping, yeah, with the help of the mask tracker. If you do use the mask tracker of After Effects, you can use key tweak to adjust the masks, to fine tune the masks, and you can also use Mask Tracker Plus to move masks with other masks. Now, the next step is we want to remove those wrinkles here. And you remember that in the other previous clip, we did this with this Clone Stamp tool on the Details layer. And then we moved this Clone Stamp tool with the Mocha track with Mocha Input Plus. Now, Mask Tracker does not have a Move Properties function at the moment. It might be that I add it in later versions, but the current version does not support it. But what you can do is to create a stabilized precomp to do this. So what I want to show you is how to create a stabilized precomp for the details layer. Usually creating stabilized precomps for the details layer works exactly like for every other layer. So you would duplicate it and apply the stabilized precomp on the duplicate. The only problem here, so to speak, that we have is that this layer has a linear light blending mode. And if you would just duplicate it and have two of the layers linear light blended together, the result would not be correct. So what we therefore have to do instead is to precompose it and create the stabilized precomp inside of this precomp. So we go to layer, precompose, say uh, leave all attributes here yeah just keep it at leave all attributes we let's call it precomp so and now we can enter it right click open composition and now we have here only our details layer and now inside of this we can create our stabilized precomp so we duplicate it and call this one here let's say uh, i1 details so this is some, so for this one, we want to create a stabilized precomp now around the eye. Yeah? We still have loaded the eye tracking data here. If you wouldn't have loaded it, you would go to the mask wherever you tracked it, choose the correct mask, in this case, this one, mask seven, and say load. Now it says the data is loaded from this mask and we can go to where we want to, namely here in this layer, yeah, and say, turn this into a stabilized precomp. So I say stabilized precomp. Usually the one with skew in perspective is the right one. Yeah, the other one is only for special cases. Usually if you want to work with the, the usual corner pin-like approach, choose the skew and, skew and perspective one and apply. Ah, and by the way, if you're not sure how to work with any of those functions of Mask Tracker Plus, just click this tutorial button and it will play a tutorial for whatever function you have selected here. But for now, we know how which function we want to use and how it works. Just select the layer and click Apply. Now it asks me which corner pin effect I want to use. And now I can actually already start opening a new composition by going here and saying New Comp Viewer. Now I have two of them side by side and I can go inside the Details Precomp and lock this comp viewer, unlock the other one, go back to my main viewer. Now I can here adjust my stabilized view and here simultaneously I see what it will looking like. With, yeah, it, it's like I choose the region that I want to see and here I see how it is looking like in the stabilized view. I want to include in my stabilized view not just 
the eye itself, but in particular these wrinkles that I want to remove, and some other region from which I can copy the texture. Yeah. So therefore I make my stabilized precomp a bit larger, like this. This looks like a good view to, to work in. And so far it's not moving yet, so if I go here you can see it's not moving with my track. Uh, and oh, there's this window here that opened up when I created the stabilized precomp. I had it here on my second monitor. But so once you are happy with the placement, so once you are happy with what the stabilized precomp should look like, you can just click OK. And now the tracking data is applied, and you can see now it moves with your eye. So now in your stabilized precomp, the eye is not moving anymore. And now we can remove the wrinkles uh, essentially exactly with the same technique that we've used uh, in the previous uh, tutorial series parts. So this means we can, like uh, in our locked composition, we choose the tutorial, so our main composition, such that we can see the final result. And then we go inside of the I precomp. I'm already here. Yeah. So this means inside of this view where the, the eye is not or al almost not moving anymore. You can see the tracks not 100% not accurate, so the wrinkles are still a little bit moving. But still this is good enough to say we want to clone stamp on top of them. So I open the layer because you can only clone stamp on the layer view and not on the composition view. Let me move this over here. And now I can take the clone stamp choose some region from which I want to copy, like this region here, and just paint over the wrinkles. And you can see while I'm painting, they are also disappearing here in the main view. Now again, we make sure that this paint goes on all frames. And you can see even if we scrub here through time, our wrinkles are nicely disappearing here. So once again to understand the setup we have our main composition inside of which we have our details precomp and then this details precomp consists of a precomp which uh, contains only the details and here in this precomp we've split the information into a background layer which represents like let, let me call this details background uh, which consists of the original details, and then we have some precomp that looks like this, that just takes this part of it, of the details, and where we eliminated uh, the wrinkles with the with the clone stamp tool. Yeah. So if we turn this on and off, you can see that the wrinkles are disappearing now. Now, on top of this details precomp, you can now also start adding a precomp for the right eye and one for the mouse to to remove the respective wrinkles around those regions, but I don't want to bore you with repeating this same process here several times. Okay, so let's sum up what you've learned in this tutorial. You've learned that sometimes you can also get away with using After Effects Mask Tracker instead of Mocha for this kind of beauty work, work in particular when your face has not too complicated movement. In this case, it's really handy to use Key Tweak to adjust or to fine-tune the placement of the masks if the track is not 100% what you need. And also with uh, Mask Tracker Plus you can create stabilized precoms, which in particular is useful to use the clone stamp pre uh, tool or other mechanisms to eliminate wrinkles or blemishes and stuff like this. Okay, that's it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me also mention here quickly that the footage of this part is kindly provided by Artbeats. So check out the Artbeats website and in particular Artbeats Express. They really have great offer. So uh, yeah, this is the end of this tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. You find lots of other tutorials about After Effects at marmoworld.com. Again, my name is Matthias and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.